Racing and the Senator Ken Matty. From the outside, Rose Maddox was quick and destroyed with Brandon's My Lawyer, Can't Buy Love, away in the top flight. Elm Drive from down toward the inside, and Freedom Fire splits horses and races four lengths off the lead. White Moonlight is just in back of Unbridled Mary in mid-flight here. A length and a half in front of Wet My Beak, who's two better than Benedict Canyon. And down the hill, Stoic Luna is last of the 11 as they head toward the opening quarter. Up front, Brandon's My Lawyer crosses the inside traffic and leads Elm Drive by a length. Freedom Fighter is out in the center. Working between horses is Can't Buy Love. Far outside is the gray Rose Maddox. In between horses is Unbridled Mary. Then it's a gap of another three lengths back. Wet My Beak with Benedict Cannon in Stoic Luna as they run to the top of the stretch. Up front, Bear Endens, My Lawyer, still the target and still in clear a length and a quarter. On the outside, Rose Maddox poses her hand. Freedom Flyer between horses. Elm Drive up the inside. White Moonlight on her back. Down the stretch they come, and the leader is still Brandon's My Lawyer. Elm Drive and White Moonlight try inside. Freedom Fighter down the center. Wet My Beacon, an upset possibility. There's an eighth of a mile to go, and Elm Drive fires through inside to take the lead. Wet My Beak charging at her on the outside. Here comes Wet My Beak surging forward. Wet My Beak's in time. Wet My Beak outran Elm Drive to the wire and beat her ahead. And the Senator Ken Matty, they covered the course in 112 and 1. And our first monstrous upset of the day, Wet My Beak from off the pace, getting it done at 23 to 1 in the Senator Ken Maddy. I didn't want to lose my voice this early in the day, my choice, but uh, there we go right now. I can't hear you. My ears are ringing from your screams during the race. Let's take up <laughs> this replay at the crossover. All right, you can take a look at her. She's all the way on the outside there, swings wide uh, when they cross over the dirt, but never missed a beat under Jose Ortiz. We saw her troubled trip from the very last race, the allowance race where she ran third. Here, it takes the entire length of the stretch, and I got to give it to Elm Drive. She put in a winning bid as well under Flavia and Pratt. I don't think she even saw Wet My Beak coming. I want to give a big congratulations to my good friend Madison Myers, who did all of the pre training on this filly as well. Tale of two completely different trips, too, and it comes down to a few inches on the wire there as Wet My Beak, the eight lightly raced daughter of Union Rags, gets her nose down in time. The four Elm Drive, she was not on the early lead. She was actually sitting second. We'll spot shadow your eventual winner, and that's a look at Wet My Beak back behind this field. She's only has two horses defeated at this point. Jose Ortiz is going to go wide, and when they hit the crossover, horses always fan out, so you end up having to go yet another pass wider as you turn for home but he does a nice job of just following the gray horse there until they level out and not tipping to the far outside until the last second look at elm drive down along the inside she already has three or four lengths on her this is a lot of ground to make up for wet my beak and a huge effort at 23 to 1. no excuse either for the two really it looked like she was going to be tight for a sec but by the time they turned for home and came in uh straight she had plenty of room Elm Drive beat her to the spot, too. For, yeah. for a couple of strides, they were right there together. Here's an ISO replay of Wet My Beak. Jose Ortiz saying, you don't need to be no Californian to win on this turf course. Those New Yorkers are <laughs> just know. fine. And this is a very confident ride as well. You know, I mean, he's a world-class rider. And I think sometimes in the shadow of IRAD, people forget that Jose Ortiz is his best, is, is as good as any, any rider to ever straddle a racehorse. And he really shows you how here. I love the fact that when they were coming around the turn, you heard Christina allude to the fact the horses can come really wide. He tapped her on the shoulder as they came around the turn to keep her just inside enough. And when he turns to his left-handed stick and gave her two little whacks right there, that is when she absolutely exploded. Perfect timing. There's not a whole lot to her. She's kind of tiny, handy individual, and these are the horses that really can turn it on here in Southern California. You need that turn of foot. You need that agility, and she suited this course very well. Vladimir Serin doing a beautiful job with this filly. As I mentioned, she has shown her versatility, and he built her up to this distance. To your point, Michelle, she was a winner at five furlongs back at Del Mar in August. She followed that up with the third place effort behind Benedict Canyon going the flat six furlongs. But aided by that momentum downhill and not having to call on her until that sprint for home, she uses her turn of foot, her best asset, to win today. If she can have a turn of foot like that going a mile, too, she's got a lot of upside here. She's a very lightly raced four year old. She's only had, this is only her sixth career start. I mean, not bad for a horse who broke her baden for 40, I will say that. She's a daughter of Union Rags out of a Spitestown mare bred by Sycamore Hall Thoroughbreds LLC in Maryland. Owned by the Thelma and Louise Stable LLC, Vladimir Serin, the winning trainer, and of course, Jose Ortiz in the irons with that brilliant ride.
23 to 1. These are the kind of horses that you get at the Breeders' Cup. And this was a very playable horse today. Looking at her last couple of races, I showed you that backtrack for a little bit. She picks up now her third win and six career starts. Solid second place finish from Elm Drive. Brandon's my lawyer made all the running in the early stages of this race. Holds on for a piece of it to finish third. Rose Maddox, White Moonlight, both making up some ground from just off the pace. I have to give Brennan's my lawyer some, some credence because I did say her stakes efforts were not as good. This was a vastly improved one for her. Obviously, she likes the hillside turf course. Nice placement there for Brand Jam and Siaglia. I was at dinner one night this past only summer. Only once? Only one. I don't do dinner anymore. Um, but I was at dinner one night this past summer, and I was sitting with two Hall of Fame riders who will remain nameless. And I said, right now, who is the best rider in the country? And I was expecting an answer to, uh, to the tune of Flavian Pratt, Joel Rosario, or Arad Ortiz. And both of them, without batting an eyelash, said Jose Ortiz. Wow. And they were so convicted of it. And these are, between the two of them, probably 10,000 victories minimum, maybe 12,000. And they said, without a doubt, Jose Ortiz. And he shows you here. He's sometimes in the shadow of a rad. Um, but in his own right, he's won 222 races this year coming into the Breeders' Cup. He is as good a rider as we have in this game right now. He's it's as good as riders I can see right now, Mike Joyce. I'm very <laughs> happy after this particular race. Well, we went official. You can count your money now. I did. I was but just I doing think that. It's remarkable in any sport. Let's just talk about sports in general to have two siblings that are at the top of their game and riding at the premier levels on the Breeders' Cup programs, in the Triple Crown, all the biggest races all over the world and internationally to have two brothers competing. This is, this is unique. It really is. And Jose Ortiz finding the winner's circle in the early goings on with the Senator Ken Matty victory here. And whoever was a Jose Ortiz fan going into this race with the win investment is a big Jose Ortiz <laughs> fan. As we take a look at these prices, you are going to see outstanding payouts here in race Does number Does he three. get the surfboard? I bet he can surf, too. Not a doubt. Are you they kidding They don't have me? a lot of surfing in uh, New York, do they? <laughs> no, but he grew up in Puerto Rico, and they've got great surfing in Puerto do Rico. Do they? Oh, Never yes, been. absolutely. I